coding made easy. What's up, everybody, and welcome to your next uh, C++ SML 2.0 tutorial. So I've been getting a lot of requests saying that they want they want to know how to collide with uh, maps, right? Um, I was telling people to go and look at the platformer tutorial series and stuff like that, but um, I just decided just to make three videos on it um, just to do it now if you guys are looking for like colliding with gravity or colliding with platforms and and all that stuff um, and all that good stuff then watch my platformer series right I'm just gonna be making a player that can move across the screen and when it collides with the map element then um, it will change red or something like that but this is just the bare bones or the bare basics to show you how um, to collide and then you can modify any way you want so if you want to add gravity and then when you collide with it um, you do something when it hits the ground or when it hits the side of a platform then that's up to you or whatever um, so I've taken the code um, from tutorial 31 and 32 uh from tu tutorial 31 this is like all the code right here the only thing i've added from tutorial 32 which is the bounding box uh collision tutorial is the uh the the player class now from the player class what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get rid of this right here and um that's going to be f that's going to be it for now and what i'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this and paste this in here and just just remove this right here so what this is how sorry so this is how our, our map is going to work um so we I remember our map file was full of like X comma X and all that stuff and if I do undo this is how our map was right so um what we're going to be doing is that we're going to represent uh, we're going to make another map called the collision map and the collision map is going to consist of only two numbers zeros and ones the zeros are going to represent a tile that is passive so a tile that you can pass through freely and one means a solid tile which means a tile that we cannot pass through right and that's how we're going to determine it so what we're going to do now is we're gonna have to load in this this um this map now I, we can use our existing um load map function already but i'm just gonna make a brand new function just um so it doesn't confuse people because there is um there is there's not nothing real different but there is uh, some things that we have to take out so what i'm gonna do is i'm just going to you know what let's just copy this whole load map function oh I cut it but yeah so and let me just um, minimize right here so I'm just gonna say load call map and um, in here instead of making it a vector to I just make it of an integer type and I'm going to copy this right here um, paste it and just make this int, and I'm just gonna call this call map. Okay, so this is our collision map, and um, what we're going to do is we're gonna get rid of all this stuff right here because we're not loading in a tile sheet or anything, right? Um, so let's just change this from map to call map, and and yeah, so. Um, when we get a value, what we have to do is we're just going to get rid of all of this right here. And uh, we'll just make a variable called A or whatever, ATOI value dot C string. Okay. So, uh, and all we have to do is pass in here is the value A. Okay. And down here, we just have to put call map and we push it back and everything is fine. So what we're going to be doing is that we're just going to be getting each individual number and our delimiters by spaces. We're going to take that string, make it into an integer and pass that in. So we're just collecting each of these individual values like so. That should be simple. You guys should understand that fully. Okay. And that's all that uh, it is for our collision map. So now what we're going to do is uh, we have to load our collision map 
so load call map col1.txt okay so we've loaded in our collision map um we can get rid of this if you want you can keep it if you want up to you um but we've loaded everything in and now we gotta make a instance of our player uh so for the position we'll set it at uh 10 by 10. Uh, for the size, we'll make it 20 by 20. And for the color, we'll make it blue. Okay. So now I'm going to pause the video and just add in the directional buttons for movement. Uh, so I don't waste time with stuff you already know how to do. So I've added in the movement. Um, and I'm going to say, play, sorry, player.update. So that's going to update everything and what we're going to do now is we're going to make uh, two for loops and we're going to loop to the uh, call map sizes, uh, the call map size and call map i dot size and what we're going to do is just make an int bottom top left right so the bottom is going to be equal to i times 32 plus 32 since it is um, each tile is 32 by 32 pixels the top is going to be i times 32 right is going to be j times 32 plus 32 and the left is equal to j times 32 and this concept should not be foreign to you because we talked about this um when we were talking about loading tile maps uh the reason why we did we switched j and i um so that i don't really need to re-explain that so we've got the bottom top um the right and the left and what we're gonna do is just do bounding boss collision but before we do that we're gonna put an if statement right here and we're gonna save call map i j is equal to one then we do all this stuff if it's not equal to one there's no point in checking for it because it's a passive tile we only want to check collision based on tiles that are solid so now we're gonna we're gonna say if player dot right player dot right is less than left or player dot left is greater than right or player dot top is greater than bottom or player dot bottom is less than top then there is no collision and we'll just set the player rect um to blue and you know what we don't even have to do it inside here we'll just do it just have it before before the for loop so uh, that's if there's no collision if there is a collision then what we want to do is just say else um, and I'll just copy this and then we're gonna put break now the reason why we put break is that let's say it's colliding with one tile right but it's, uh, what it's gonna do is gonna set the color to red but it's gonna check all the other tiles as well and then if it's not colliding with another tile, then, uh, well, it's not going to reset it to blue because we don't have it to reset to blue in here. But there's no point in checking all the other tiles if we already have a collision, right? So uh, the reason why I'm adding the break is that once we collide with a tile, we don't need to check the other tiles. Um, so it's just less work on the hardware. And after we draw the map now, we're going to make a call to window.draw and we're going to call player.rect, okay? And we're gonna draw the rectangle to the screen. So let's draw this. Let's run this. Sorry. And if we run this program, la 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 la, go into the game world. And if we touch the tile, it turns red. So right here, it's turning red right here already. Right? So even when we're above this tile, it's um it's saying that we're colliding with it so that means there is um a bit of a problem so let's check this out quickly okay 
Okay, so I've set a few breakpoints, and the problem is not with our collision code. The problem is with our drawing our map code. And uh, if we can see, the size of it is um, it's supposed to it's ten, but it should be really nine. And if we look at it, the size of the first map element is is zero. Um, so that means we are setting a value uh, for map, and we're not putting anything actually in map. So what we should do firstly is um, just make a call like so. So this is our load map. So we should say that if temp map um, dot size is greater than zero, then we do this. Okay. So um. Let's run this again. And let's see. So yeah, the size is fixed to nine now. Okay, so the size is fixed. So that means the collision should be proper. So let's do this quickly. Thank you.